Hi, welcome to Unfiltered. My name is Jacob Stella. My guest today is a celebrity makeup artist who has worked on the faces of Sophie Monk, Jackie Gillies, Lydia Chavello, Janet Roach, that's her last name. Yeah, The Real Housewives of Melbourne. She's worked alongside Pat McGrath. You've been in like at arm's length with Bella Hadid, basically, right? Yes, and Kendall, Gigi, Irina Shayk. Yeah, Donatella Versace. We were like, stop. I was like, school's us, senora. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just in your way. Yes. Okay, there you go. Thank um, you. Carla Recuso is here. How are you? You know what? Look, I'm suffering <laughs> terrible morning sickness, but yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm in the second trimester. I'm in so that place exciting. where that's like, you know, you're in the honeymoon phase of being pregnant, I right. guess. I think the last time you saw me, I was like, don't. Throw you were up. like Jacob. Don't throw up during your brow if, appointment. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> don't do that. I to didn't him. even know you were pregnant at the time. I don't think you had announced it yet, but you're just like, yeah. You're like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> you're yeah. like, you're just I, tr- honestly, for like three whole months, I was like, I'm great. I'm really, I'm really good. <laughs> 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 no, but apart from that, I'm good. Um, honestly, I'm just, yeah, chilling. Living, doing, laughing, loving. Doing what I do, yeah. How Love are you? That. I'm good. Yeah, how is I'm this? Good. I'm so proud of you. I'm so Thank proud of this you. space. It looks amazing. Thank I you. Love I'm so glad. It's kind of like a second home now. Like, I really do feel like I'm at home when I'm here. Definitely. I love it so much. Like, it's so much fun. The girls are amazing. We get shit done, but yeah. it's a party at the same time. And there's that element of, like, owning a salon where it just eventually is home. Yeah. Because I you was... can't leave <laughs> no, work ever. I was here nine hours so, ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's just like that. Do you remember when we first met? Because uh, we go, we've known each other for a long like, time. what, six, seven years. <gasps> wasn't the first Mechaland? No, no, it no. wasn't. No. I remember seeing you and Heidi at the Benefit, I don't know, we're at like the QT hotel or some <gasps> shit. Yes. Do you remember? Did we go bowling? We, we, we no. did go bowling for Benefit at one point. Yes. But maybe that was after. I just remember I, us yeah. being like, you live in Greenville. I live in East Kilo. What yeah. do you mean? Yeah. We're like, we're, we're both Italian. We're like, basically uh, cut neighbors, <laughs> cousins. Hey, like, Zani. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, our nonnas have to be friends. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Well, oh my God, that feels like forever ago. It literally feels like forever ago. And then I, cause then I remember it was the Becca and Sephora dinner. Do you remember on that rooftop? Yeah. I think that's where we like spoke for the first. I was yes. like, I was really thinking this. I'm like, when the fuck did I meet Carla yes. for the first time? Yes. Yeah, I think that's when we like probably met for the first time. So at the beginning of your makeup journey, did you study? Did you do a diploma? Did you, I, are you self-taught? So when I was, well, it was actually my 19th birthday. Love that. And I enrolled in Napoleon Purtis Academy. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. So I started that just before my 19th birthday. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I was studying criminal justice and psychology. Oh. And I was working at The Chemist. Okay. So I was like, people would ask me like, oh, what, you know, L'Oreal Foundation should I buy? And I'd be like, hmm. That one looks good. Like- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. I literally go out, I spray Sally Hansen all over my face. Yeah. I put a little bit of pawpaw on my lips. I'm out the door. Yeah. I go yeah. to CQ, didn't even put mascara on because I was like, it gets like on my like, you know, like my eyes after a couple of drinks and it's just not a vibe. <laughs> or it is a vibe. Maybe the next day too, if it's a bit smoky. Oh my God. Um, so I actually <laughs> went into makeup artistry completely blind. Like as an accident no like no? i was like it's important for me to not do my makeup like this i think right, right i was right. like i think yeah. i should learn for myself yeah so i was like okay criminal justice and psychology i was very very interested in it i have always been very interested in psychology so i was yeah. like okay this is where i'm going i'm working at the chemist part-time um obviously around uni and yeah. then um, i was gonna do this makeup course and i was just gonna learn how to do my makeup a little bit better love and then my did first- you do the diploma or was it no. the i don't know there's like so many courses in napoleon there was have. two oh napoleon. there's two so there was mine which went for three months i believe okay. at the time yeah um and then there was another that went for one year uh full time but that was car accidents oh uh, like special effects uh, halloween yes yeah. it was special effects so i was like gotcha. as much as i would absolutely love <laughs> i was like car accident makeup like <laughs> no well you know like you know like um yeah yeah, yeah. when you're no. in a, a movie no no, no yeah, i know i know like yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They do like the cuts and the, you know, yeah, all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So I was like, okay, as much as I would absolutely love 
to do that. Yeah. I need to think realistically. And is there a lot of work that way for me here in Melbourne? In Mel- yeah, I was going to say Thinking, in Melbourne. you know, films and stuff like that. It's like if I was planning on moving somewhere where there was like a lot of filming and yeah. a lot of TV work, definitely. But I think for where I was kind of going, I was like, no, I feel like I want to do more bridal and yeah. glamour and um stuff like that. So Yeah. So that course kind of gave you like like the fundamental knowledge on makeup, would you say? Like it kind of was yes. like, okay, this is how to color match. For me anyway, like my short course that I did when I was like I don't know, like 16, 17. It was very much that. How to put on eyeliner, how to choose colors for a smoky eye. Like yes. it was very kind of basic. Do you feel like that's how the Napoleon Purtis course was? And then you kind of expanded from there. I still, to this day, 11 years later, mm. always refer back to my course in every really? day of doing makeup applications. And and it's funny because now we've come such a long way in makeup and yeah. things are so different. But when I'm hiring... I will always look at where they studied and I will always look at what kind of course they studied because I think that now where we're at with makeup and there's so many amazing self-taught makeup artists and I absolutely love that. I just think they have those creative bones in their body. Yeah. But I just feel that like color theory with makeup is so important. Shapes are so important. Yeah. Sanitizing, cleaning, like there's so many things, you know, when you are practicing doing your makeup at home, you may get used to your face or um, the way that your skin is and and it looks amazing. You can smash out a a look on yourself in 25 minutes, but when it comes to someone else's face, different bone structure, it's a completely different story. A hundred percent. When I am hiring stuff, I can't sit there and say, this is the kind of, you know, eye shapes that you need to absolutely name or these are the kind of colors I need you to nail. I need you to be able to feel comfortable in any circumstance we're in. So I feel like that training that I got at Napoleon was so broad and there was a lot of in-depth training of all of those things that I mentioned. So I still use them now. And I think that's like how I became so like vigilant with like my brush cleaning and um, all of those things in my kit because they were all embedded in me so early. Yeah, 100%. I do feel like, of course, it was up to me to be able to grow and and expand knowledge in makeup. Yeah. But I think that those really key elements that I really needed were a lot to do with them. Yeah, right. Which was great. But I gave everything to my course. Like the first night that I went there, I was like, oh, this is so much more than that like I was yeah. like I didn't even realize like yeah. I was I was overwhelmed yeah like I was sitting there and I was like I'm gonna work on the runway yeah I'm gonna work on the runway I'm gonna be a trainer in Australia like I yeah. was like oh my god but like everything changed yeah for me 100%. that night so I would go home I would like read the booklets that we got I'd write my own versions of notes or ways that I understood them I'd keep like little notes in my me kit too. um yeah like I would just do those things me because too. I think it just really helped me understand I can do that but I'm a lot more of a visual learner as well so yeah. for me it was like I would come home from class and then I would literally recreate or replicate what we did that night like 10 times Mm. then I wash my face and go to bed and go the next week but like I literally would have to like I would just keep on practicing 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 I feel like as obviously social media has changed everything in terms of like makeup artistry people become a lot more self-taught now but it doesn't necessarily mean that they like you said know how to work with a lot of different kinds of faces complexion skin type skin tones so I feel like as much as like a course gives you like the fundamental knowledge I feel like you really do still need to like be in the trenches practicing and practicing your craft 24 7 that was me anyway i was obsessed yeah from that first class i was obsessed um when did you start doing celebrity makeup Um, and how did it like how did like opportunities come about okay i'm gonna do you remember (laughs) pregnancy brain um i don't even remember what i did yesterday now okay i feel like and this is something that i get a lot of messages about on instagram Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. ask me about the photo shoots and about like yeah working in kind of media and stuff and i think that it all ends up being a ripple effect yes so back in the days like i'm talking like literally maybe nine eight yeah years ago my sister and i started doing photo shoots and by doing photo shoots we would work on media clients so it could be whoever the brand hired at the time so i feel like with a lot of familiar faces that my sister and i started doing was then eventually gaining more trust from other familiar faces and then you know it goes from brands to then channels it could be like channel 10 or the logies and stuff like that that will then hire you for other things so i really feel like it was all kind of a ripple effect but definitely my sister and i continuously posting consistency consistency 
but also we were getting great feedback from the brands. So yeah. my sister and I would work on a very strict time schedule and yep. work at the same time, which is <clears throat> everything yeah. for a brand because they're like... They're paying you by the hour most of the time. And they're anyway. paying the model and the photographer. And the and studio. The studio, and everything. And the director. So it was lot. working under a lot of pressure, obviously, and it's very hard to be doing hair and makeup at the same time. Yeah. But um, we learned how to do that. And by doing that, people were like, hold on a second, we get... We get two for one. Like we get hair and makeup at the same time. They come together, they leave together, they work together well, and we're getting a great result. And the makeup and hair is getting done in, you know. In the same amount of time. In the same amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. So then you go from one brand going, oh, these girls are great. They like, we get an extra hour and a half or whatever we get when we do have them working with us as opposed to having maybe someone that would need three hours or um, stuff like that. So that always, I think, was really helping us at the time. Yeah. And then, yeah, so it kind of just was like a ripple effect. And like that literally leads me to like my next question because you obviously worked alongside Gabby. Yeah. And you who became that like dynamic duo. Do you feel like that differentiated you guys from you guys being like item compared mm-hmm. to singular makeup artists and hairstylists? Do you feel like that really helped propel both of your careers forward? Look, I would never want anyone to think that they need to have someone with them. Yeah, do you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Course, because I do truly believe that you can be an absolutely incredible makeup artist on your own and you 100%. don't need to have someone with you to be able to achieve no. anything that you want. More like in your case. Yeah, I think in my case, for me personally, having Having the emotional support yeah. of having my sister with me that can give me great advice on like, I could, you know, I could stand back and be like, I don't know, I don't know, is that like enough eyeliner? Like yeah. things that she knew me or she got to know makeup. I think it definitely helped definitely, more emotionally, yeah. especially in this industry because this industry is so cutthroat. Literally. So it's so nice to be able to have someone that you trust that's going to be able to give you some honest advice. Yeah. I really do believe that hair and makeup go hand in hand. They do. Yeah. And I do think that that definitely helped the both of us because we were able to be a team yeah. and we were also able to be really convenient for people. Like people 100%. will be like, oh, I can go to Herb and I can get my hair done gonna, too and my makeup done too. Exactly. Especially like in yeah. TV and film as well. They want like you nine times out of 10 need to be like a hairdresser and a makeup artist. Exactly right. And so, cause they want to hire one person, not two. Yeah. If you have like the best of both worlds, it just 100%. makes things so much easier. hundred percent. And then going back to that time thing I was saying before, it's yeah. like, oh, okay, cool. I don't have to start at 4am. I can yeah. start at <laughs> yeah. 6 so, or yeah. you know, whatever. Those 100%. things make a huge difference. Yeah. I definitely do think that, like I said before, I don't think anyone has to go out and find someone no. to team up with. No, 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 I think you just all. have to have really great consistency, love for your work, be honest with yourself and honest with your client and I was going to say yeah you communi- achieve the same things communication sure. skills like in general you need to know how to be able to have a conversation with a producer or with someone like you need to know how to kind of market yourself in that same way not just to be like oh, okay I'm just going to be here and do my makeup and then I'm going to go home like <laughs> yes. you know what I mean you yes. really need to know how to network and like that's probably the fucking hardest part about any yes. career like it's I am terrible at networking I'm so bad <laughs> I leave that all up to Gabby I'm like <laughs> really okay I love that she's just like I don't know she's just so much more I don't know she can just like talk like that whereas like I'm more if I'm comfortable with you then I'll just be a dickhead yeah yeah but like I'm not gonna do that on set like (laughs) I'm just like (laughs) I get it I get it completely so yeah I I, yeah definitely get that element would you say you can separate work or do you feel like when you guys get together all you used to talk about or still talk about is work related yeah it still is yeah yeah like I mean don't get me wrong eventually speak about all we have to speak about for of that course. day and that yeah, be yeah, it. Yeah. but so much of our especially our younger years work 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 all the yeah. time and like you know you think of your siblings right you think of living with your siblings day to day and then on top of that working with them day in day out mm-hmm. every single day of your life under pressure under pressure constantly <laughs> always and then arguing about who's driving and who's making the toast <laughs> And who's getting out of the car to get the coffees. <laughs> yeah. So all of those things. Yeah. Definitely we have a <laughs> lot of work with our relationship as sisters. But now yeah. that we're older yeah. and things are a little bit more different. She's just had a baby. Yeah. We have teams now. Yeah. But I remember my dad actually banning business talk at family dinners. I was going to say. Because he was like, enough. I don't want to hear about the curls anymore. <laughs> And if you should do curls or be I don't want to hear about the wonky lash. I'm done with the wonky lash. Done. I'm done. And he'd hear yeah. us like arguing at 5 a.m. I drove last time. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> 
So, yeah, I think that, yeah, for yeah. sure, definitely was a huge part of our relationship. Yeah. But it's funny because you know how sometimes you can go home from work and <laughs> you can't really explain what happened because they're not going to get it? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, true. You can go home and be like, listen, bitch. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. The bride today, like you could just, yeah, you can, yeah. It's good having someone that gets it. Working from home for me, like no one gets it, obviously, like you just said. So like being here, we're like, we're all makeup artists. Yeah. It's the best. You could be like, you know, we just have one of those clients and they're like, yeah, I get it. Like I get it. I get it completely. Oh, they makes get it so much better. Completely, just, you feel so much more validated. One hundred percent. Unless you feel like you're gaslighting yourself twenty four seven. You get support, and like yeah. that's what I missed so much about working at Mac and Napoleon. In retail, I missed right? the support, and I missed being a part of a team Me and too. getting inspired from other makeup artists, which was such a huge reason why I chose to grow my team because I was like, this is lonely. Yeah, it's three a.m. and I'm Literally. going to a bridal party, and I'm so scared right now. Yeah, because I'm, I'm walking driving in the an hour and a half half to the middle of fucking nowhere yes it's so yeah it's so nice so yeah. whatever element it is obviously if it's a hairdresser or a makeup artist with you it's so nice to have company and be able to 100%. share those things yeah with, especially in this industry it's almost like i say to my girls sometimes you just gotta get in the car and just debrief 100 percent. let it go go past maccas on your way home get yourself a coffee and some chicken nuggets bitch if you yeah. need to just, you know what just let it go because yeah. then you leave it at work and you can go home yep. and you can enjoy your saturday night 100 percent. because otherwise as makeup artists you will resent your weekends yeah 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 that's you'll right you'll resent it that's you'll right. be so shitty at seven o'clock yep your partner will be like do you want to go and get something to eat and you're like <laughs> i have done 10 people today literally <laughs> you know what i mean i've been on my i have had three pieces of wheat all day literally. as a meal i'd be like do you know what the nonna did to me this morning literally. you have no idea <laughs> she made me use a little sponge applicator literally <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah totally. from the max factor compact like 40 years ago yeah and you're yeah. like the fallout is just it's just killing. everywhere <laughs> i can't even clean it up <laughs> it's too late do you have a preference of glam is your favorite like bridal tv editorial red carpet mm. do you have any preference i don't Red, red carpet. Ca- you are red carpet? Yeah. You're a red carpet girl. I am a red carpet girl. Okay, the reason why I am mm-hmm. is because I feel in that space, you have a little bit more of creative control depending on your client. True. So you can go back. It could be most of the time it's with the stylist mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you can come up with a look yeah. um, and you have a lot more influence on it. Yes. Whereas with bridal, it, you're very much working with, you know, Maybe a photo that limited. they've seen before that they love. If I'm working with like an artist, for example, and I'm working on a photo shoot or like red carpet, I find that like it's so much more experimental. Mm. Most of the time anyway, like they want to do something cool. They want to do something different. They yeah. want to stand out. But then again, like some red carpet clients, I've only had a couple, but like some clients just want to go super like minimal because like paparazzi photos, they t- they get every single detail so if one thing is like off it needs to be perfect i remember like after the logies and stuff gab and i would sit on the plane and the thought of like not having the wi-fi for like (laughs) the two hours or whatever it is back to melbourne we'd be like do you think it's okay (laughs) do you think anyone's written an article saying that they're bad like we would just be oh i just remember it was so funny but Uh, yeah totally yeah um there's nothing you can really do about that yeah yeah exactly paparazzi sometimes are just the evil I feel like some are good and some are evil. Oh, I mean, sure, if they like you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, they'll take, like, beautiful photos of you and it's great. Yeah. But, like, the ones that, like, honestly, I reckon some of them submitting their (laughs) things for the article. I'm like, if you were my friend, I'll, I'll, no. No. Yeah, fake friend. Like, come on. Out of that, like, they choose the one where they're like, I don't know, like, the worst (laughs) photo. Like, and we've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. And then the friend tags you on Instagram even, even though, like, they look cute in the photo, but you look fucked in the... Yeah. Fake friends. Fake friends, I'm telling you. Can you tell us your worst client story? <laughs> oh. Do you have a worst client story? Uh, to be yeah. honest, I don't have many. I don't think I have any really bad client stories. I've heard some really bad client stories, but none that are like worth writing home about. Not really. I mean, don't get me wrong. We've been in plenty of situations where... <laughs> <laughs> We've been in plenty of situations where, like, I'll just be like, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) (laughs) Like, and then, like, I go from, like, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, we can add the green. And then, like, we we do it. And then at the end, you're just like, 
don't tag me. Yeah. Don't tag <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. I suppose we haven't had anything like horror story scary. Yeah. Yeah. No, like me I've actually seen, I was it Ashley Day. She posted a TikTok yeah. about like the worst photo shoot experience she had had or something like that. And um, when she was younger and it was just oh. like disastrous. I've never experienced something like that. Yeah. Me I've neither. just more so like been in situations like it could be like a huge bridal party or something and I'm working with the girls mm-hmm. and I'm like, I can like start to hear that like things are like, I think we're going smoky eye but now it's green and now we want pops of pink and i'm just like oh my god and a double winged liner and, and a I'm cut like, crease and a- <laughs> who told you yeah. to do the pink and the green together Which, oh. Oh, and then yeah. you can't just because you have blue eyeliner usually like you're not usually like wearing this dress or like have this whole look so we've yeah. definitely been in situations where i've just been like <laughs> breathe and yeah. i'm just gonna take over and you know what in that situation i always say hold the mirror mm. and tell me what you want me to do. Or if, mm, if okay. I can see that the energy is just not right, I will literally just be like, take the brush and show me how you want me to do it. Because yes, it's going to take another 15, 20 minutes of your time, yeah. but everyone's going to be a lot more sane after that. So it's yeah, just it's so true. better. If you try to give your professional advice and you can see that it's not resonating with them, and this is something that I go back to Napoleon all the time, like mm-hmm. tapping into that emotional layer with a client and yeah. just understanding that, yes, we can tell them a hundred thousand times. They may not have the right eye shape for a winged liner as thick and as heavy as they want it, yeah. but you can only give that professional advice. Once you're past that and they still want it at the end of the day you you want your client to be happy yeah so just do it so get them to hold the mirror 100 work together with them and eventually you'll get there and it's makeup you can always wipe it off and put it back on exactly exactly different when you're like coloring hair or cutting off hair that would be yeah yeah Um, actually no i do have a really funny story but it's not makeup it's hair it's my sister my poor sister she was like 20 years old at the time um she was working at a salon like they used to have like some walk-ins and stuff yeah so like this lady walked in and she was like oh i just want to have my hair cut and gabby's like okay sure no problem (laughs) so the lady like she starts cutting her hair right Mm -hmm. and the lady's like stop like dead asleep in the chair like but i think we're pretty sure it was fake sleeping like she was like (laughs) <laughs> and Gab's like, I swear there was like a, a snore. There was a snore in there. Stop. So she was like fully dead asleep. So my sister and anyone that knows my sister, she's a very safe hairdresser. Yeah. So yeah. you tell her you want to go this short, she cuts that much, and then you, she slowly then, works towards it. Because she's yeah. like, I'm not having you call me in an hour crying. Yeah, and yeah, saying yeah, it's my yeah. So she gives her a trim, and then the lady said that she wanted bangs. So Gab cut her like a curtain fringe. Cute. So she literally like... <laughs> And then the lady, Gab's like, oh my God, like I've got to wake her up. So she's like, "Um, excuse me, like we're all done here. And the the girl literally was just like, oh my God, I hate it. She's like, I hate it. You've just cut my hair off. And Gab's like, that's what she Gab was literally like, have you got amnesia? Look at, the, go- look at the floor. Like there was like that much hair off. Oh. And she was like, no, nah, nah, I'm not paying for this. And she just got up and walked out. Oh, so like no. Gab was like, oh my God. Like she was so young. Uh, but yeah, she be mortified. It was just like a walk in, like wanting to get a freebie, got yeah. a free haircut. Fuck. Yeah, pretty funny story though. That is Who hilarious. falls asleep in a haircut? That's, yeah, nah. I'm- no one does. So, so you reckon she was fake sleeping that way she could be like, oh. <gasps> Yeah, what did like, you do? Yeah, because otherwise you would have been like, you are. You'd be like, you literally just told me 20 minutes ago that you want a haircut. <laughs> like, like, literally. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, these, these chairs are hollow. <laughs> <Love>. <laughs> do you have a best client story? Do you have like one client that sticks in your mind that you're like, oh my God, I would do that again in a heartbeat? Yes. I have so many clients that I love, but I have to say a special shout out to Jess from Adelaide. Mm-hmm. I did her makeup one time, I think it was like four or five years ago for a cricket awards night. I love that. Yeah, cool. Um, where she was in Melbourne and the stylist just happened to book my sister and I. Mm-hmm. I think it was five years ago. She just emailed and she was like, I'm getting married and I would absolutely love for you to come to Adelaide. And Aww. at the time as well, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, should I go? Like, we're planning on having a baby. Like, I don't yeah. know like where I'll be at. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm sure it's fine. It's, it's just like, you know, interstate. Anyway, I went to obviously go there a couple of weeks ago and I brought my team with me, which was like a fun, cute hmm. little activity it was so fun and she said to me as i was doing her makeup she said in five years that was my favorite makeup ever and i just knew i wanted to have you here and i was just like 
This is oh, why I love my job, you yeah. know, because I think that that's what it goes back to what we were saying before about the emotional layer with yeah, people. Like yeah. if someone feels really happy and really comfortable and you make them feel the best version of themselves, it's like yeah. so important. 100%. And that just made me really proud. And it was like, it was a really course. nice moment, I think as well, because I was like, especially being pregnant and being there as well and yeah. knowing that I have to go on maternity leave, obviously for a little bit. I was just like, that's a really nice way to kind of, do my last couple of months yeah. working. That's so I so think that's, sweet. Um, yeah, that's probably like my favorite. Yeah, that is so sweet. I love that. Like you, like I love, I've had a lot of really, really good clients. One of my favorites though was I had a cancer patient who was going to a wedding and she had no hair, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, nothing. And she's like, glam me up. She goes, full glam, let's go. I literally like got like dip brow and I was like, mm. Placing Carving little hairs and, yeah. you know, doing everything for her. And she, she didn't want to see until the end. Yeah. And then when she saw it at the end, she started crying. And it's just like, those moments like that mm. make you think like, that's why I fucking do this. Like, yeah, it just warms your heart. It humbles you so much. Definitely. Like this person's just gone through hell, but like if, like you've just made them feel so much better. And like in your, your situation, she hadn't seen you for five years, but she still remembers the way that you made her feel five years later. Yeah. It's unreal. I know. It's so special. And I think as well, like, especially with your client there, like making you feel as though that they have the full trust in you Yeah. and to feel better. And that's how you know just how important it is sometimes someone's getting their makeup to feel better. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I say to my girls too. I know sometimes you're tired. I know sometimes it's hard. I know that you might feel like someone's being difficult, but it's coming from somewhere within. 100%. So like you just have to work with them. Yeah. Like I said before, tap into that emotional layer, find out what it is and make them feel Guide good. Them through Guide it. them through yeah. it. Yeah. Just telling them, oh I no, you that. look fine. You look fine. That's not going to help. Yeah. I believe you. No, you look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah, it's it so does, true. You have to take that extra 10 minutes. You have to take that extra 15 minutes. Yeah. Sit down with them and figure it out. Yeah. 100%. percent help you so much more. So Carla also owns and operates an online e commerce store called. Called Kinda, as well as a full calendar of clients. I don't know how you do it, but <laughs> when did you first get the idea to start your business? Like Kinda. And why did you feel like you wanted to start your own business as well? Yeah, well, I feel like a few years ago, I mean, Look I. Look at me been... being all interviewey, like I'm, <laughs> I'm like a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a few years ago, I've always kind of worked at making my own brush cleaner. Yeah. Well, like my version of brush cleaner. Mm -hmm. And back in the days when I used to go to bridal, I used to put like lavender drops in my brush cleaner because mm -hmm. I'm like, it'd be calming for the bride. Yeah. So I used to do that all the time. That was just like second nature to me. Mm -hmm. But just before COVID, I was like, okay, I'm moving on to the next stage of my life. I've been so lucky that I've had these amazing followers that have been there with me throughout yeah. this time mm -hmm. let's do something big let's do the next step let's do something that I don't have to physically be working on you with my hands to still feel like you're getting that experience from 100%. me hundred percent so I was yeah. like I'm gonna do it but if I'm gonna do it I want it to be a little bougie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like I want like a nice bottle <laughs> I almost want people to feel like they want it on display in their bathroom because literally we have brush defense lined up it's, like it's, it's so I know, good. I love that but yeah I was like what is the reason why people push to the side their their brush cleaning all the time it's usually because it doesn't come in a nice bottle it smells gross it's yeah. just like not it's tedious some tedious. people yeah it's, yeah. Not, it's not a nice experience it's exactly. like you have to shampoo them or you have to like alcohol alcohol smells like shit and then like they got just, work the next day you need yeah. them to be dry there's so many different things but yeah. the real push for me was I remember one of my friends was getting married at the time and she had spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on all these skin treatments, skin treatment mm. after skin treatment. And she was like to me, Carla, I just don't know what to do. And I was like to her. Like as in because her skin was still yeah. not where she wanted it to not, be. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, do you clean your makeup brushes? Like it just literally came to me. And she was like, no. And she goes to work so every day in the city, nine to five. I'm talking like full coverage every day. And I was right. like, okay, you okay. are literally – putting that back onto your face every single day. The bacteria. Yeah. So I was like yeah. to her, yeah, like I was like, okay, you need to clean your makeup brushes. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to get onto this because this is seriously looking like it's just spreading, right? right. Around your face. But I was like, if I am going to do this, I need to come at it from a makeup artist knowledge point of view. Yes. And I need to teach people that 
it's not just an add-on, like it's a necessity. You need to be doing this every single time yep. you do your makeup. Yep. So 100%. Um, yeah, that was the kind of push. And wow. then I was like, I'm going to, you know, like I'm going to share this with my audience, obviously, yeah. which was probably like the funnest part for me. Yeah. And then sure. I got to get like real creative on packaging and colors. It's so and much yeah. fun. Product development is one of those things that I never knew I had such a passion for. I know. I mean, we can just get into it now. What's your creative process like when you're creating from start to finish? Like you, someone who jumps on an iPad, sketches everything out. For me, I jump on Photoshop. I'm Photoshopping. I'm like, putting prints into packaging. I'm creating my own packaging on Photoshop and then mm. I'm sending it out. Like, what's your creative process like? The first thing I do is like, okay, I know I would use this, but yep. how do I teach this to someone who knows absolutely nothing, nothing. Yes. about makeup? Yes. Which is, this is where Gabby comes in. Cause okay. Gab's like, I've never had to know anything about makeup. So yeah, she's just right. like, and I'll explain something to her and she'll be like, Yes, that that's makes so sense. cool. Yeah, yeah, so I do that first and then I try and use like, I'm not a drawer. I can't draw. Yeah, but yeah, I, I try and use like something fun and like cute that would like stand out packaging wise. Yeah. So like with the towels, it was like a milk carton. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because um, I thought that that was, it was like. was so cute. cute. <laughs> yeah. Or like with the candles, I wanted them to be almost like laying in a bed, like a really nice bougie yeah. bed. So I guess it's just like a lot of thinking. Brainstorming. Yeah. Just brainstorming. And then I kind of put like a mood board together of like ideas. Yep. And then, yeah, go Scrap, from there. But it's it all, such a long then... process. My foundation brush was like over a year. Crazy. And yeah. it's still like to this day, one of my favorite brushes to use. Thank you. When are you bringing it back? <laughs> I know. I know. I got a message this morning. I get messages all the time. I feel like we are did you it, bringing it so back, or well. Or is she limited edition? It was limited edition. She's limited edition. Okay. And because the whole point was that you don't need to buy another one anytime soon. Yeah. I just want to like, you know, when you like, you know, you do something good. So just like leave it at whatever, yeah, you yeah. know? It's like a, a, um, a reboot of Friends. Just leave it where it is. Yes. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. I get that completely. Fast and the Furious doesn't need 12 movies. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't. No, you're so God right. Bless them. They've done amazing. I think it's great. But it's, it's like number 12. It's like how many times? How many, how many, how many times are they breaks? driving fast? <laughs> driving racing. You're driving the car outside of the plane. It's like there's not much <laughs> left to do. You know what I mean? So that's how I felt about the brush. Dead. I was I like, am... let's just let's leave it as a good thing. I am dead. <laughs> that is so good. With Carla and Kinder used to be two separate businesses. Yes. Why merge them? The reason why I wanted to merge them, one, the whole customer service element would, mm -hmm. was just going to benefit so much more from having the one, Until the one umbrella. account, the yep. one, you know, email address and all of those kind of things. Because we would get so many people being like, oh, I got something from Kinder and then I got something from Carla. Can I join them? And then. Oh, uh, like join you, the order. Yeah. Join the sure, order. Sure. And um, yep. so that. The customer service element was the biggest thing for me. Yeah. And the second thing for me was that I am now growing into a different kind of version of myself. Like it's not just me at home making the tutorials. Like I have a brand behind me. I have a team behind me. Mm -hmm. I soon will have a little bebe yes. around too. So I feel like we had a really great thing going with the brands and I didn't want them to just be known as a person. I wanted them to be recognized as a brand. Yeah. I didn't have to be the only one in front of the camera and talking about it or in yeah. the campaign images. I wanted it to be known as a brand and like a team. Yeah. So important for me, especially moving on to this part of my life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I changed it to kinder, yeah. all kinder. Yeah. But kinder is Carla if you really look at the letters properly. Yeah. The K, the yeah. Y and the R was yeah. where it started and then that, that's how we kind of... I kind of did this, a similar thing with BK Beauty. BK Beauty is just Jacob backwards. Yeah. And then people are like, what? I, know, like I told one of my workers that the other day. She was like, that's <laughs> So cool. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, because that's the thing. Like, eventually, like, this is going to be my baby forever. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I don't want to be in all the campaign photos. No. I don't want to always have to be, like, the face or feel like I... Yeah. Like, the brand doesn't exist without me being the face or, you know, around it somehow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, similar kind of thing. 100%. Similar kind of thing. I would get people all the time being like, but who's Carla? Like... You know what I mean? Like the, with Carla was great, but it was like, okay, you have to know me to be able to be yeah. like, oh, well then maybe we'll get it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So I wanted it to be like, yeah, more of a brand than a person. Yeah. Which is, yeah, same Love thing that. as you. For someone who is starting their own business 
or wants to, what are some tips that you have? This is me just picking your brain at this point, but like, what are some tips like in terms of being a makeup artist, in terms of getting into the e-com side of things? <laughs> Don't look at me. Like I literally am figuring this shit out as I fucking go along. <laughs> like, um, I have many questions to ask the person that would yeah, benefit Yeah, it's very from vague, this. very vague. Um, Do you like to sleep? <laughs> Because yeah. you're not going to anymore. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, do you like to work 24 yeah. seven? <laughs> do you want to cry every night before bed? <laughs> Look, I would say you need consistency. Mm -hmm. Before you have anything else, you need consistency and you need the work ethic. And I really don't want to sound like, <laughs> you know, like Kim Kardashian's like, just get your ass up and work. Just like, no, it's not what I mean. I mean, okay, you can't one day wake up and say, I want to do this. I'm going to be a business owner. I'm yeah. just going to do it. I'm gonna and just put in your bio entrepreneur. <laughs> you like you can't do that. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to want it. And yeah. when I say you have to want it, I mean you have to <laughs> physically be in front of your computer at eight yeah. o'clock at night, so exhausted, packing orders yeah. because you want them to go out as soon as possible because you know if that person gets that order as soon as possible, yeah. they're going to think great of your brand. Yeah, 100%. That's what I mean by that. Like yeah. I mean like are you willing to, you know, do all those things because that's what it takes. And it's not something that happens overnight unless no. you're a very lucky person who gets all of the exposure on TV or yeah. articles. So many articles come out and, and it blows up and that's great. But yeah. still, it's like, but how long does it do that for? Yeah, that's so right. So you need a backbone. And I think that it yeah, takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Do you think that backbone success. needs to be a presence on social media? I think a presence on social media helps, mm -hmm. but then it also doesn't. As much as I think that having a social presence is amazing and it will definitely help. Yeah. And especially for someone like me who was able to build up that client trust mm -hmm. before was mm -hmm. great. But I think sometimes as well is like, because it is a saturated industry, I feel like we've really kind of changed over time. And back yeah. in the day we were following, we were liking, we were commenting, and now you're lucky to save something. Like I know me, so I'm like, true. I see a photo and I'm like, oh, that's stunning. And I just keep scrolling. Yeah. That kind of element of social media has definitely changed quite a lot, but definitely if you are going to have a social presence, it definitely needs to be one that has been worked up for a, quite a long time yeah. and be able to have that trust with your followers where they can be like, oh no, she's recommended something before and I loved it. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I guess it's like a blessing and a curse having that social presence be the backbone of your brand or of your business. Yeah. Some of my girlfriends who have just started businesses recently, they're like, Jacob, they're like, I don't know how the fuck to post on Instagram. How mm -hmm. many times do I post on Instagram? What do I do? Like I'm consistent. I'm not getting followers. And I'm like, honestly, same. Like yeah, I have- People aren't following it's, anymore. Nah. And I find that if your Instagram is like just your brand, just your products, it's going to get a lot less engagement. I've, oh, I've noticed yeah. it gets a lot less engagement than like if you were to put a face to the brand. Absolutely. Yeah. And people love the element of behind the scenes. If uh, yeah. I post a behind the scenes photos on a photo shoot or mm -hmm. my day-to-day -day life or whatever, mm -hmm. it gets so much more interaction yep. than I would the perfect photo at the end of it yep. when they're all dressed up or whatever. 100%. Um, people love how it happened. Yes. People love why it happened. Yes. It just resonates so much more, especially for people who are like on a similar wavelength or, or have those similar interests. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that sharing behind the scenes or even sharing sometimes the work that goes into it. Oops, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I mean, some days where I'm being a total dickhead <laughs> at home, like yeah. I'm literally just being like, I'm just going to take the piss. Just delusional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my yeah, views yeah. are like ridiculously more. And I'm <laughs> yeah. just like, oh, this is like. But then when I post like the best makeup that I've ever done in my entire life, it gets like three likes. You're like, oh. Yes. Or like <laughs> I'm giving like professional advice or yeah. saying something that it's like totally different. But they're like, 100%. bring back Carla, that's a dickhead. Yeah. Bring back yeah. Carla gagging over the bone broth. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. It's Literally. Crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. What would you say is like the biggest fuck up that you've had to learn from either brand or just in business in general? Don't trust the couriers. <laughs> oh, T. They will drop things. They will throw things and yeah. they don't care about your fragile sticker. Um, yeah, that I'd have to say. Yeah, and I okay. think um, as well, sometimes, like I said before, when you're ordering bigger amounts of mm -hmm. stock, you need to like quality control is 
everything. Yeah. Um, I would rather pay for a whole chunk of that order be added to the cost of the order yeah. just so I know quality control yeah. because there's so many things that can go wrong after that. If like yeah. something is faulty or something's wrong, you then can lose trust of a customer and then you have to return it. And then it's like so much harder. And then word of mouth spreads about it. And then yeah. it's like, oh fuck, well like there goes another 20 people that it could have been just, yeah. A bad review is going to travel so much faster than a good one. A hundred percent. I personally think not trusting that, you're just going to wrap it up beautifully and give it to the courier and he's yeah. going to deliver it fine because he doesn't really care. You can't pay him to care. You can't no. pay people to care. It goes back to that. No, I called, yeah. I remember I called Ozpost and I was like, we had all of these orders go out. Like, I don't understand. Like, why is it broken? Like, mm-hmm. but the customer told me it was broken. I wrapped it in bubble wrap or whatever. And he yeah. was like, oh, I think it had like a six foot drop. And I was like, what? Thanks. Yeah, he's like, they go onto a belt. Like, and I was like... <laughs> Oh, Great. Thank you so much. Shit. So that was like, I was like, oh my God, next time we are hundred percent having it um, inside a foam bed yeah. that is like so much more secure that, yeah. you know, because if you are someone that's ordering a glass bottle and you're in Brisbane and I need to send it from Melbourne and then you're on a time schedule, mm-hmm. that's a huge thing. hundred percent. So, um, yeah. I think you just have to be super careful with obviously ordering large quantities to make sure quality control. And then second is cover all elements and don't ever think that someone is going to care like you do. Yeah. Because they don't. Fuck, that's crazy. My worker one time, she said to me that her cousin worked at the airport or something and the fragile boxes, mm. like they were just kicking them in. Like, <gasps> Stop. just Yeah, kicking them in. They don't care. Are you serious? Yeah. You really can't trust anyone. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust can't anyone. Trust anybody. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. No, for I know. real though. Mm. And like, I guess because they're a courier company and like when a customer places an order, like they get the tracking, they get insurance, whatever. Yeah. But like for us, it goes so much further than just that because then if, if that fucks up, like there's, I guess, peace of mind in knowing that there is those things like the tracking insurance, whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, like you said, like shit goes wrong 24 yeah. seven. And like, if you, if you get one bad courier, Like it can, yeah, it can be devastating. Yeah. I had a lady tell me she wants to kill me because (laughs) (laughs) her brush defense arrived broken. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Are you being serious? Because this is e-com. This is e-com. This is like sometimes people, they write on the computer and they're aggressive. They don't think that there's a person behind. And I was behind the computer and I just started crying. And my husband was like, what's wrong? And I was like, someone wants to kill me. Yeah. I can't this believe This is what I that. mean. So then it just creates this rolling ball <laughs> effect where I'm then on the phone to Ozpost like, how could you drop it from six foot? I yeah. put a fragile sticker on. And people don't see that. They don't no. understand. No, they, they just don't. think that they're talking to a robot. And um, yeah. that's why if you can try to eliminate that, it is <laughs> so important. And you should. But you go with thicker skin. When you first started and you are getting like, you are getting to work with brands, companies, sponsorships, like photo shoots, the whole lot. I personally couldn't afford a lawyer. So I was like dissecting it all myself and fucking Google Google translating everything because I had no idea when it came to contracts. Oh yeah. How did you navigate that? Like read the fine print. There is always something I've noticed in mine anyway, that like 70% of the time, there's always something in the fine print you've got to watch out for. (laughs) I'm laughing so much because I've learned the hard way. (laughs) Yeah, right. I've been like, oh, okay, so you own me yeah. forever. That's cool. You've got this You've got this thing coming yeah. up and you sign away yeah. Yeah. and you forget to read that, you know, obviously the, uh, brands need to protect themselves. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's fine. So, Which you would know more about now being on the other side of it as a brand owner. Absolutely. Doing sponsorships with other people yes, and whatnot. Yeah, because as yeah. much as there is, you know, people that try me a little bit sneaky and then, yeah. you know, like the fine print and stuff like that, there are also people on the other end that will take advantage of small businesses. Yeah, so 100%. you do need to have, obviously, a very mutual respect and it is always better to have things in writing so it's very clear and yeah. everyone's on the same page. But yeah, I'm very lucky to run a lot of my contracts through my cousin, cousin. at the time. <laughs> well, not at the time, she's still my cousin. But um, I mean, like... Like, you know, I just used to be like, hey, it's me again. I've yeah. got a really cool gig. Um, I'm just going to send this to you. Make sure that Can like. You just um, check it for me. Yeah, just make Please. sure that like, yeah, I haven't signed my life away. And yeah. she might just come back and be like, hey, 
take this out. Might want to, yeah, change take this. Take this out, yeah. change it. I just don't know where you want to go with this, so I think you should do that. Yeah. Yeah, well, now I suppose with the brand, obviously, we have a lawyer that takes yeah, care yeah, of yeah. things for us and, yeah. and with the salon as well, so that's always great and it always <laughs> is like a good backbone, <laughs> but you definitely have to learn the hard way. Yeah, you definitely. Do. It's part of it. 100%. <laughs> what is one brand or product that you have refused to work with? Oh. Or do you like a sponsorship for? I can give you an example. Mm. The fucking silly sponges. What's a silly sponge? You don't remember? You remember like the silicone, like the silicone sponge that everyone would. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I ever used that. I, I never used it, but someone, a company reached out to me and, and they wanted to do like a sponsorship. And I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> like. It's just oh, no, I know which ones I haven't uh, brand that I wouldn't work with. Oh. Those teas. Oh, Those te- skinny me tea. <laughs> <laughs> like, tea you know, like, Those tea talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Remember yeah. the styles? Like as soon as you get like a little bit of followers, it's like now they're all down. They're, they're doing the teas. Yeah. Tea's no good. <laughs> Mm-mm. When you start getting the emails for tea, you know you're, you're doing something right. right? Just just stick it out. You'll you're be right. Killing you're killing you're it. You're killing it. You're killing it. And honestly, who – can I swear on this? Yeah, of course. Who the fuck is going to think that I'm me taking a skinny <laughs> t- fucking tea and yeah. my dad makes cannoli on a Tuesday night? <laughs> It's like choose yeah. the demographic. Yeah. Choose yeah. the niche. I'm not the one. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? So stuff like that. I can't say specifically, but like I wouldn't work with any brand or any product that's gonna go against yeah. me. Yeah. Because I feel Your like integrity. my followers know who I am. Yeah, same. Yeah, if <laughs> like, I started being like, um, you need to buy this tea, it's amazing. They're gonna be like, like that's if not it's not from T2, fuck off. <laughs> like, Literally. Or they'll be like, we, we know what you eat. Yeah. <laughs> we can see it. So like, no. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I just wouldn't. It's not worth it. It's not worth the money. It's not worth losing your integrity. And like I said, you would want that trust by your followers. Sorry, yeah. I should say. Is uh, worth a lot more than one 100%, collaboration. 100%. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. So we have a few rapid fire questions. Okay. A little, Just a little like segment. You're really putting me on the spot here. What? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> You're never to be stuck going to be, you know. <laughs> Who was the last text in your phone? My husband. Cute. What's your favorite curse word? Um. <laughs> Gatsu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> is that actually Katsu? Like, uh, uh, I mean, it could be. You just yeah. don't want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who is someone that put you on your path and that's like really inspired you today? Oh. Um, you can say Pat McGrath. I'll just make it up shit. But is there anyone in particular that you're like, oh my God, they have influenced me so fucking much? Could be celebrity. Could be anyone. Doesn't have to be a makeup artist. Can be like just anyone. I, I would have to say Pat McGrath. Yeah. Yeah, I really, yeah. I really would. You know why? Uh, she's that perfect uh, balance of still a working makeup artist till this day. Yep. And yep. could have easily stepped off the tools many, many years ago and didn't. Yeah. So I hold a lot of respect 100%. for someone like that. Because I think the easy way out is always to be like, oh, I don't have to do it anymore. You yeah. know, but yeah. I think you have to always lead by example or, yeah, especially when you want to hire a team. So I think that, yeah, that element of what she does is amazing. Yeah. yeah love that. Home. What is the most expensive thing you own? My home. Your home? Yeah. I was going to say a house. <laughs> yeah. Your house? Yeah. Cute. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, most uh, of the time it's going to be like a house or a car. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess your house or your brand or. Yeah. You know what? Sure. Okay. House is boring. <laughs> My brand. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I definitely haven't gone designer shopping in a long time. I'm a bit scared after Balenciaga, to be honest. I don't trust anyone anymore. Yeah, yeah Balenciaga. To be honest, I don't – you know, I don't know anything – Designer, I've never bought anything designer in my I life. I sound like such a dickhead saying that. No. This job is Alexander Wang. It's old, <laughs> guys. It's old. I've had it for no, like two no, winters. No, that's. I love that though. No, but like, I mean, I don't know. I just like there are things that I want. Like, I, I've always wanted to get like a Louis Vuitton backpack. Always. Very cool. I'll get there one day. Yeah, I, I feel the same with you. Yeah. Like, I mean, sure, I love nice things and I think that beautiful pieces are great and they can be yeah. timeless and, um, you know, I, I do like to treat myself every now and again, but it's not like a, on my mind all the time. I don't sit yeah. in bed and like... And like flick, I've got to see no, what I'd, Prada's got. Like, no, I'd so much rather invest that time, effort and money into my business. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. In your opinion, who is doing the most? Oh, like, I mean... Good way or a bad way? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you give me like... Like, a- who's doing the most? Like, who do you see on your feed and you're like, holy shit, they are doing everything. 
For me, I feel yeah. like it's Maria Fatil. Oh, yes. She She's is she's killing a it. fucking killing machine. It, killing it, killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Good on her. Yeah. Love that for her. So good. Yeah. So good. Gorgeous. Do you have anyone? I feel like well, yeah, definitely definitely Maria, but I yeah. um I don't I can't think off the top of my head right now because I'm like mm. my head's going into like like celebrities, then like Yeah. Yeah. Whoever. I feel like Kim's always she's like there's no one that like like really kind of hustles like she does. hundred percent. Okay, picture this. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> I got this from you know Flex? Flex Mummy. Yeah. I got this from her. So like I was just like, this is fucking the best thing I've ever heard. I need to do this. All right. Picture this. You were given an opportunity Mm -hmm. to be an egg for a year for a million dollars. You wake up a year later, no time has passed, and you have the money. However, the catch is if the egg breaks, you die. Okay. You can choose one person to protect you in egg form. (laughs) But if the eggs break, but if the egg breaks, (laughs) they get the million dollars. What the fuck? Um, okay, yeah. Who would you get to protect you? Or would you do it? <laughs> okay, so like. I'm literally crying. If you, oh if you were to ask me this question, like, you know, who's going to protect you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Your initial thoughts, obviously, like, my husband, right? Yeah. But he will break an egg. <laughs> <laughs> he will, like, without even realizing it, crush. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh my God, I'm literally yeah. crying. I'm going to say. <laughs> My best friend Tony. Oh, okay. For, for this reason specifically, <laughs> she's so well thought out with what she does. Love she that. will. She'll put me in a fucking incubator. <laughs> <laughs> she would do for that. Entire, yeah. yeah, she would because yeah. she would. She she just like. Put <laughs> 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 yeah, she would definitely do that. Love and I that. feel like my husband has. He would. He would want to, but he just. He'd be like, whoops, you know, whoops. He would just drop me straight away. And then he gets a million, but he gets a million dollars. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, what a that's mess. great! Well, thank you for coming onto the podcast <laughs> thank today. You. Thank um, you for making me cry of laughter. <laughs> I had so much fun. Good. I always get so nervous before I do like podcasts or something like that. Yeah. And then once I'm in the once mode, you're in the zone, it's like yeah. just go go it's go. Just good. It's so fun. I'm I glad. I'm so glad. I feel like we've literally been trying to plan this for probably a year. so long. Yeah, it's just hard. Like we've just <laughs> and then I messaged you last week. I'm like, hey, I want to do a podcast on Thursday. You're like, yep, I'll be there. <laughs> yes, I know. See, just sometimes happened. it's so, so much better like that. A hundred percent. Yeah, I love 100%. it. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Thank guys. you for coming. Where can people find you? Where can people buy your stuff? Um, so kinda k y n d e r dot com dot au is where the products are. Mm-hmm. And then everywhere else is just Carla Recuso. Uh, that's double C, double Z. And <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I will Thank see you, you all in the next one.